Hi, it's Shannon Hasbell. Wes Montgomery is one of the most celebrated jazz guitarists of all time, and there are very good reasons why he is. He had a beautiful guitar tone. He had an incredible ability of consistently building creative melodic ideas throughout his solo. He also used different techniques during his solos, such as octaves. And soloing using chords. The first time I heard Wes Montgomery was back in 1990 when I was studying at the Western Australian Conservatorium of Music. In fact, the first jazz solo I ever transcribed was a Wes solo. It was his rendition of Duke Ellington's Satin Doll from the album The Wes Montgomery Trio. I absolutely loved the Trio album. I listened to it continuously over and over. Um, at this point, I'd never seen him play. There was no videos or footage of him actually playing, so I just assumed that he played with a pick, but he had just got this really nice tone on the amplifier. Um, and of course, some of the playing is, is quite fast, quite speedy. And when I found out that he used his thumb, I was like, my God, he's playing that with his thumb? <laughs> And there are a few things in the solo that really stand out, that are also sort of epitomize his playing. The kind of creative ideas, the melodic ideas, there's this call and response, and it just builds and builds and becomes more intense and more exciting as the solo progresses. For example, it on, you know, this kind of call and response, call and response. And then there's this, there's this new idea. And then when it goes back to the D minor, he carries on with that little melodic idea. So there's really good continuity between the chord transitions. what he's doing is he's outlining a C major 7 the Peggio. Now if you think of the D Dorian as being the second mode of C major over a D Dorian is fair game that's going to work really nicely. And there is an F major 7 the Peggio. superimposed chords are C major 7, F major 7 over the D Dorian, which is a really nice sound. You're really focusing on those sweet notes within the, uh, the Dorian mode. So that's a really interesting thing I learned when I started transcribing Wes's solos. So in this case we're in D Dorian and he's 
you know, he's playing C major seven arpeggio, he's playing the F major seven arpeggio quite a lot. And that was very interesting and very useful um, as, as an improviser, because it meant that you could sort of focus in on the sweet notes that you might not do if you're just thinking Dorian. If I'm just thinking D Dorian over the D minor uh, chord, I may be missing out on these notes that give it a certain character, a certain color. And so Wes really, you know, learning his solos, that really helped me when I was soloing. It's like, I've got D Dorian, so I can, I can do an F major seven kind of. And uh, I can do the C major seven arpeggio. Seven arpeggio again. Now, after this section, he goes into this killer lick. I mean, it is just absolutely fantastic. What's even more amazing is the fact that he's using his thumb to play. I mean, I'm struggling using a pick at that speed. <laughs> he's just doing it with his thumb, no problem. And it's just so relaxed, so effortless. It's just wonderful. Um, but it's a beautiful lick too. It's, it happens over the D Dorian. Again, that F major seven over the uh, D Dorian gives it the emphasizes nicely the, the nine flat third the nine again so this is sort of decorating the ninth really <laughs> this is great so goes from the flat five and that now that's the thing that gives it the feel I, I think some guitarists tend to to miss out on this if you listen to the difference if I'm picking every note and now with that when I get to that I pull off and hammer on it's just got a bit more of a bounce and a bit more of a swing to it it's very subtle, it's very slight, but it has quite an impact on the way, on the rhythmic feel of the solo. And then you've got this little turnaround here. So we've got it momentarily goes to the major third. And then the ninth, and the revolving around that flat third. That's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, he's one of the greatest. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about it. He's been applauded by, by so many great uh, jazz guitar players over the years, and even guitarists outside the jazz sort of uh, style of playing. Um, a really important player.